This is Freddie News Review, the podcast. And now, America's independent voice, Rob Reddy. Every Thursday is Talking Tough with Dr. Tommy Curry. Dr. Tommy Curry, how are you, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you doing today? Wonderful. What are we talking? Oh, but, but wait, wait a minute. Before we start talking about anything, congratulations on the big, big win in academia. Tell everybody what happened. Oh, uh, well, I recently received a Ray A. Rothrock Fellowship uh, for being one of the up-and-coming associate professors uh, at Texas A&M. Congratulations. This means thousands of dollars toward a project, right? Right, yes, thousands of dollars uh, towards a research project over the next three years, and it was allegedly supposed to uh, fast-track you into consideration for full, so I'm pretty happy about it. You've already got the tenure. You've got this big fellowship. Man, you are doing it. Congratulations. I appreciate it, sir. All right, talking tough with Dr. Tommy Curry. Dr. Tommy Curry, what are we talking about today? Uh, today I want to ask really a question. What uh, does academic criticism think it's doing? All right, let's do it. All right, so I don't think there's really any need to debate uh, the realities that confront black people in America, Rob. I, I think that the realities that confront black people are simultaneously reflected uh, as the consequences of poverty and racism, and they both uh, serve, as Jose Easton says uh, in 1831, as a motivation for white people not to become niggerized. Uh, now, I've been reading editorial after editorial on pop magazine sites, you know, and I'm constantly attacking these kind of white liberal uh, magazine sites that are commodifying uh, social disdain, especially black disdain in the world. Everything about what we say and everything about what's going on, be it Trayvon Martin, be it Syria, et cetera, is turning into commercialized knowledge. It's the use of knowledge for already predetermined ends of recognition. So when you think about the reflections that a lot of black intellectuals have come about during Syria or on the Syria issue, uh, it's a pseudo-leftist analysis that commits us to making mockeries of really any true understanding of militarism. And unfortunately, what we've continued to miss time after time is how the domestic situation with increased violence against blacks that's happening under Obama also point to the inadequacies of academic theories about imperialism under Obama, because we have not yet developed the language to talk about the increased forms of violence in America that we are accepting and that we acquiesce to and submit to because we see Obama, or rather rationalize Obama, to be a black man. I remember 12 years ago, back when September 11th happened, I read I wrote an editorial the day after the attacks asking and really showing people how imperialism and empire, how U.S. militarism was responsible for the growth of terrorism in the Middle East. And I remember the reaction to that when I was in, I was a junior in, in college. I was attacked, I was ridiculed, I was told that it was too soon for criticism. But now I look a decade later and the same types of things I said the day after the attacks is now cool. It's cool to post pictures about slavery or militarism inter, or militaristic interventions that tell people never forget that next to 9-11. But I, I was laughing about this yesterday. How is it a criticism if you wait until people get comfortable with it and will agree with it to make it? Right, and this has been the kind of pattern that we have with academic criticism. We make criticism that we know people are going to agree with. Our popular academic discourse, it's feminism, liberalism, right, our seemingly profound challenges to injustice are, in fact, distractions from the increased power of the state, not only in terms of society, but even the way the state is controlling academic institutions and the things that people are saying. Now, despite the fact that we've had the government exposed for one of the largest surveillance operations since the fantasy of the Orwellian nightmare of 1980, before, black public commentary continues to focus on things like the Harriet Tubman sex tape or ideological hashtags about black power or even de-radicalized accounts of Trayvon Martin. Now, the increased social and political repression that we see coming out of Florida and the same type of state mechanisms that were used on Dorner are showing us, showing the American public that protests and political disdain are no longer acceptable forms of democratic resistance. And instead of us charging and changing or challenging that, we're turning to academic blogs, Facebook, and Twitter so that we can get likes and recognition. Academic criticism, rather than energizing and expressing the fury and frustration of societal oppression of minorities, is now become a handmaiden. The debates about foreign policy are not debates about empire. And in those brief moments where we actually do understand or recognize the destructive logics of the Obama administration, we're debating whether or not we should let Obama do what he does because he kind of gets a pass because he's a black American male that we have to support, and whether or not it's a moral good. And these same thinkers 
that are claiming violence is happening, violence is increasing, we have to recognize what's going on, they have no problem erasing the actual violence that happened to any other group of people, poor people, black men, uh, you know, homosexuals, transgender people. We have no problem if they erasing these experiences and they don't fit into our categories. See, the scariest part about this is that Cornell West is actually correct in regards to the violence and statism under Obama. But because Cornell West has in many ways been bought off by the very same establishment, it rings as a issue of how, why he's not getting the recognition and resources and attention that Obama gets rather than any genuine or authentic claim about why statism under Obama is fundamentally dangerous not only to the world but to black people as a whole. Our academic criticism has become more sophisticated. It can't look at a president in blackface. It can't look at the types of injustices that just ring our categories incorrectly or, does, or upsets our personal morality as being the basis of criticism. Academic criticism has to become a revolutionary aspect, not in terms of causing revolt, but in waking up the minds and making people aware of the way that empire, capitalism, economics, and social repression function. We allow people to die, and we let that be a distraction to determine from people organizing. Wow. Very well said, Dr. Tommy Curry, one of the best minds out there. How can folks get in contact with you? They can hit me on Twitter at Dr. TJC. You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice, Rob Ready, presented by Reading Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readingnewsreview.com.